Welcome to the How to Brew Kombucha class. So today here I'm going to show you how exactly you can brew your own kombucha at home. Um, this way you can save a lot of money instead of spending, you know, three to four dollars on a bottle in the store. You know exactly what's going into your kombucha and you can make it exactly how you want um, and the way you want it. So to brew kombucha, it's honestly very, very simple. Your basic supplies that you're going to need are about a one to two gallon glass jar. You want it to be glass. You're going to need some type of tea. So I typically use an organic green or black tea. You can use herbal teas, but the caffeine within the tea here actually helps to feed the, the kombucha um, and the scoby while it's fermenting. You're also going to need some type of sugar. So I usually use organic cane sugar. You can also use coconut sugar. I know that this has worked before as well. Um, and you'll need about a cup of this. And then finally, the last materials you'll need is about a gallon of purified or filtered water. So going back to like what kombucha is and why you want to be drinking it, um, kombucha is a type of fermented tea. And so during the fermentation process, it builds up all of these great natural probiotics um, and those good bacteria that your gut needs. And the really fantastic thing about kombucha is that it's going to make probiotics that you can't necessarily find like in your, your probiotic you're taking at home. So these are going to be completely like natural wild strains that you wouldn't find. Um, the process of actually uh, fermenting and what ferments the tea is this organism at the top of the jar, it's called a SCOBY. And so SCOBY is actually an acronym. It stands for a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So it is a living thing. You do have to take care of it. Um, but honestly, it's pretty easy to take care of, you know, much easier than a pet. Um, you really don't have to do a whole lot. You just let it sit. So once you've gathered your supplies here, like I said, you need the water, the tea, the sugar, and your jar. The first step to this whole process is making sweet tea, basically. So I get a big stock pot and I boil, you know, about that gallon of water um, on my stove. Once it gets to boiling, I add a cup of the sugar. And so it's usually the ratio is one cup of sugar to one gallon of water. So if you have less water, more water, you can just adjust that accordingly. Once you get the sugar dissolved there in the water, then I add the tea. So for a gallon of water, I usually use six to eight tea bags. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's an, not an exact science, so it doesn't matter exactly if you're at the perfect amount. That's just the number that I found work well for me. So I just add the tea bags there to the stock pot. I remove it from the heat and then I cover it and let it sit. The really important thing about this step is that you have to let the tea come to room temperature um, or else if it's too hot it will kill the scoby and you know you won't be able to make the kombucha and have the fermentation process. So when I do this I usually do it in the evening so I let it sit and cool overnight or I do it first thing in the morning and then it has all day to cool down and then I um, take care of my kombucha in the evening. So once your uh, tea, your sweet tea is now to room temperature, you're ready to go ahead and add it to your jar and place your scoby in. So all you have to do, you make sure that your jar is clean, obviously, um, pour in your sweet tea, and then you introduce your scoby into the jar. It's okay if the scoby does not sit right on the top at the beginning. Um, if it floats or it sinks, really any place in the jar is okay. It's not, um, it's not gonna hurt it any. So once you have your SCOBY introduced then to your sweet tea, you want to make sure you cover your jar. You don't want to use an actual lid because the fermentation process does put off carbon dioxide, so that's going to build up too much pressure. Your jar might explode. You'll have uh, kombucha all over your kitchen. So what you want to use is a thin like dish towel. So I just place the dish towel over the jar, and then you want a rubber band too to seal it off. Put the rubber band over, and that's it. So you wanna make sure this is sealed so nothing gets in, um, you know, no dust particles from the air or anything like that that's floating around. So once you have your kombucha covered, at this point, all you have to do is let it sit and ferment. The timing on the ferment really depends on how you prefer your kombucha. So I leave mine sit just out on my kitchen counter, just as you see it here, for about two weeks. And that's my sweet spot. So the longer you let it sit, the more sour it will become, the more fermentation is going on. So it's really to your taste, you know, however you like it. You can do less time, more time. Um, you just don't want to taste the liquid in your kombucha and it still tastes sweet. 
If that's the case, it has not fermented long enough and you need to keep going. If it is sweet at all, it's not done. So you wanna make sure that it does have a little bit of like that bite or that sour taste um, to know when the fermentation has at least completed. And then it's up to you how long you want to let that fermentation go. So at this point now, your kombucha has been sitting out on the counter for about two weeks or so, and you're ready to drink it. Now you can actually drink it straight just like this. Plain, you know, just the tea flavor, that's totally okay. What I like doing is a second ferment. And what that means is I introduce some kind of fruit to then flavor it. So for your second ferment, you'll need a couple more supplies here. Second ferment, you're gonna need some either quart or pint-sized mason jars, that's what I use and you're gonna, going to need some fruit. And the fruit can depend on what you like. You know, you can do just about anything um, to second ferment your, your kombucha. So for example, I have in mine here, I have some blackberries and blueberries. You know, I've done strawberries, you can do raspberries, grapes, um, apples, peaches, pears, honestly, anything you can imagine. Um, you can definitely search for recipes out there on the internet. There's tons of recipes out there. And uh, I, I just suggest that the, the fruits that you should use are gonna be more that, the ones that have more sugar. So let's say you wanna make like a citrus flavored kombucha, like orange or grapefruit or something. In that case, you'll want a little bit more of your sugar because the, uh, in, the bacteria in your kombucha are going to feed off of the sugar in the fruit to continue the fermentation process. So that's why the added sugar would be important at that time. So the process of your second ferment, like I said, you're just gonna need your jar of kombucha, your smaller jars that you're going to separate it into, and your fruit. And so during this process, all I do is prep my fruit, wash it, cut it up, and I put some in the jar. I usually fill it up about a fourth of the way full of the fruit at the bottom. And then when I'm ready to pour my kombucha in, I take my scoby out and I set it aside, usually on a, um, like a plate or in a ceramic bowl, something like that. And then I simply pour the kombucha from the big jar into the smaller one. At this point too, like if you have fruit that the meat of the fruit is not exposed to like a grape or a blueberry, you want to mash it up. So I just use um, a wooden spoon. You always want to use wooden utensils when dealing with kombucha. You do not want to use plastic or metal that will actually kill the bacteria. So I use a plastic or sorry, a wooden spoon and I just mash up the fruit in there, mix it all up. And then at this point, you do want to seal your kombucha. So I put on my lid, twist it tight, and I let this sit on my counter for about 24 hours. So during the 24 hours, like I said, those bacteria and probiotics in there, they're gonna be feeding off of the sugar from the fruit, continuing the fermentation process. And because you're sealing this jar, this is when you get the carbonation in your kombucha. It's pretty flat just in your big jar here, but with the sealed jar, that's when you'll get the bubbly and the carbonation. So if you like more bubbly kombucha, you definitely want to do a second ferment. So like I said, after about 24 hours, I'll usually kind of taste test, see if I think it tastes good. Um, if I think it's good to go, then at that point, I stick it in the fridge. Once you move your kombucha to the fridge, it won't completely halt the fermentation process. It'll just slow it way down. So I just put the kombucha directly into the fridge just like this. I leave the fruit in and I just stick the whole jar in the fridge. And this honestly can keep for quite a long time in the fridge. Um, you know, again, like I said, it's not going to completely halt the fermentation process. So it will over time get more sour, but if you don't mind it, that's totally fine. And um, so once I have it in the fridge, then Obviously, I'm just, you know, able to enjoy it whenever I want. Um, about a gallon of water will make <clears throat> about three quart-sized jars or about, I would say, like six-ish um, pint, depending on how much you pour into each jar. And like I said, this gives you the opportunity then to flavor this however you want. So if I make the big jars, I usually have different flavors of fruits for each one, so then I have a variety at home. Um, like I mentioned, if you're doing a citrus fruit, before you seal the lid, at that point you would add, I would say maybe about like half a teaspoon of sugar, just so that the probiotics and bacteria have something else to eat um, as it's fermenting again for the second time. Uh, you can also add things like herbs or ginger, things like that. I mean, definitely be creative and experiment. You may have failed experiments um, and that is okay. Um, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. 
And so two, when you keep your jar out on the, t on the counter while it is going through its second ferment, you want to make sure that you're burping the lid through like every so often, you know, once in a while when you walk by. So that's just pushing the top. And if you hear the click, then it's fine. But if you don't feel it give and there's no pressure, you just want to unscrew the top, let some air release and then tighten it back up. If the pressure builds too much, again, your jar may explode and you'll have kombucha all over your, fr your kitchen. But after that, once in the fridge, it's fine. You don't have to burp it or anything because that fermentation slows down so much. Um, so those are really the basics to brewing kombucha. It's really hard to honestly mess this up. Um, probably the most common questions I have are, you know, where do I keep my kombucha? Does it have to be dark or cold or anything like that? When you're going through your first ferment in the big jar, you can leave this out wherever. I leave mine on my kitchen counter. You can put it away in a pantry. I just don't recommend an area that is moist or would contain moisture like your basement um, because that would then give the possibility of maybe mold starting to grow. You want it in a cool, dry place, you know, and I wouldn't stick it like on a counter where the sun hits it every single day. Um, again, the sun and warming it up too much could increase um, mold growth. So obviously if you look at your SCOBY and you see some green fuzzy stuff starting to grow, that's mold, you cannot consume it at that point. You just wanna to toss it all out. That's really the only way to kill or ruin your SCOBY or kombucha is if mold would grow on it. Um, two, let's say you um, go on vacation, you're not gonna have time to take care of your kombucha while you're away or anything like that, and you go a month without with it sitting out and you know that it's gonna to be too sour and you're not gonna like it. All you have to do, dump out whatever liquid you don't want, leave a half a cup there, and then just brew a new batch of tea and start over. It's totally fine. You can just start over and they can sit for as long as you want, honestly. I mean, if you just don't aren't feeling like it or you have a stockpile of kombucha and you wanna let it go, I mean, let this sit for months and that's okay. You know, again, like I said, as long as there's liquid and as long as there's no mold growing, it's totally fine. Um, once you do get through, I guess I forgot to mention, when you get through your second ferment, let's say, and you're through all of your original liquid, you always, always want to leave half a cup left over to start your next batch. So once I would fill all my jars up, I leave half a cup in the big jar, I pour in my new sweet tea, put my SCOBY back in, and start the whole process back over again. Um, and like I mentioned as well, always wooden utensils, never plastic or, um, or metal. And then if you um, like have a SCOBY and you really just kind of want to just slow everything down, you don't really want to be messing with your kombucha, you can always put it in the fridge as well. Like I said, that slows down the fermentation process. It won't hurt the SCOBY. Um, it just slows everything down and give you some more time as well. So that's always an option too. So these are really, like I said, these are the basics to brewing your own kombucha. It's simple. It's pretty quick, it's not very time consuming, and it's gonna end up saving you a lot of money. So if you're one that loves to drink kombucha, you have it almost every day, definitely save some money, start making your, it yourself. It's so, so easy. We do have SCOBYs available here in the office to pick up, so if you're wanting to get started, definitely just let us know. You can come pick up a SCOBY anytime. And if you do have any questions or anything like that, please just feel free to reach out and ask us, You know, ask on the Facebook page as well. And like I said, get out there and look up some recipes of fun stuff you wanna try um, because there's really no limit to what you can make. So I hope you all um, learned a lot and I hope you have fun making your own kombucha at home.